Hey everybody, how you doing? This is Gabe Finocchio from the Royal Royal and I uh, am here today with a friend of mine, uh, Meredith Andrews, and we are going to be, <laughs> gonna be uh, having a fun time. How you doing, Meredith? I'm good, Gabe. Thanks so much for having me. I'm pumped about this. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, I mean, gosh, we, when was the, when was the first time we met? I think we met like six years ago. Yeah. Uh, sure. <laughs> I don't remember. I try, I usually kind of base everything on, um, how old my children were at that point. So, uh, <laughs> but I, I literally don't remember. I have, I have a kid who's six, so maybe so. That sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, that was, um, I think we, yeah, we met, I think in Chicago. Um, yep. And uh, you lived there for for quite some time. Ten years. Wow, ten yeah. years was it really? It was really. Oh God. So what? <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, and I mean, you're a Southern girl, aren't you? Yeah. Yes, through and through. It was like... hard. <laughs> there, there were there were moments that were hard, especially the winter moments. <laughs> yeah, Chicago is it, during the winter is basically like a permanent polar vortex. Basically, right? <laughs> basically, <laughs> yes. So when the polar vortex hit, you know, last week, I was like, "Thank you, Lord, that I don't live there anymore." <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Not, that's good. That's awesome. So where are you now? You, I'm you, in Nashville. We've been in Nashville for four and a half years, Jacob and I, and our three kiddos. So. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. That's so cool. So, obviously, uh, you know, you do Meredith Andrews. You, you have your your you know you've been doing music for a long time, haven't you? Yeah. Yep. So like f like fill me in on you know I don't think we've actually ever talked about your like the kind of gone into maybe journey. little details yeah about your journey your musical journey where did sure. you how did you start and then how what led to where you are now well okay um I'll try to condense this <laughs> <laughs> because I could literally take 25 minutes on this story alone but um basically I grew up in a little church in North Carolina small town my mom was one of the worship leaders but she was just like volunteer um because she also served in kids ministry and my dad was like an elder and cut the grass every other Saturday. It was like that kind of deal, you know, Beautiful. Um, there church. was like maybe two paid staff people at the church. And so I, I was there anytime the doors were open and I absolutely loved it. And my mom was singing and leading worship. And so I would listen to her practice throughout the week. And I just, wherever she was, she had this like little karaoke machine with like tape decks and microphones. And I would just sit, beside her and listen to her practice and would sing along, you know, and I just, I don't know. I was just so drawn to music and, and worship when I was little. And wow. So I, you know, they stuck me on stage when I was six years old for the first time. And then, you know, it just kept happening. And my mom and I um, would do like Southern gospel music in our church, like sing a duet and then go around to area churches. And I started writing songs when I was 12. The first song I ever wrote had six verses and no chorus. Um, <laughs> I guess I thought I was like a modern day hymn writer or something. <laughs> uh, but you gotta start. Yeah, I mean, you gotta start somewhere. So, um, but that was around that time too that I started playing tambourine and singing backup for our youth band, and then that just kind of evolved into playing keys and leading worship for my youth band, and then for big church, if you will. Um, and I started singing at a bunch of churches around our town, and um, but when I was 17, I went to a Rebecca St. James concert. Wow. She was like my favorite. Oh my. And she had this uh, kind of altar call for people who wanted surre to surrender anything in their lives, right? Yeah. So I just went forward because the whole time she was up there singing, I just felt like this fire burning inside of me. And I'm like, what is this? What am I supposed to do with this? You know? Right. And I just said, God, whatever this is that's like burning in me to, to do something like what Rebecca is doing, like I just surrender it to you I hand it over to you it's it's not mine so whatever you want to do with it I'm I'm on board and God said to me so clearly that night Gabe he just said be faithful where you are be faithful wow. where I've placed you and wow. so that's the thing that I feel like I've carried throughout my life because after that I went to Liberty University and I led worship on a couple different teams there um, and then I was hired on at Harvest Bible Chapel um, right out of college and then after I had been, I uh, probably, have, I don't know, six months after I moved to Chicago, I started going to Nashville to write songs with 
with random people. <laughs> it was just like relationships through relationships and uh, eventually signed a record deal and met Jacob and then he moved to Chicago. And so we, we were planted in Chicago for basically 10 years. And, but I would travel on some weekends too. So I would lead, you know, most of the time at church at harvest and then travel the other weekends. Um, and then, you know, now we're in Nashville, uh, four and a half years in and, and love it. And God's planted us at a church here called the belonging and, um, where we, I just volunteer. I just serve there once or twice a month and it's pretty great in the season of my life. Um, just having three little kids and, um, traveling some on the weekends and then just getting to go to church with them on the others. So it's good. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I'm sure there's tons of other artists at that church that are probably doing the same as you, right? They're just, they're just like, you know, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm a kind of a big deal on the road, but, uh, and outside of here, but I'm just, I'm a kind of a, you know, a regular dude or just hanging out in my local church. Yeah, that's exactly right. And so many people are like, how did you get such a stacked roster? Did you like <laughs> recruit, do some like hef, hef, hefty recruiting? And we're like, no, right. this, this is the Holy Spirit. You know, I think yeah. re- in all reality, like just to speak specifically to the belonging, there there are a lot of different worship leaders and artists that are there, not just in like the Christian music genre, but film and TV and pop and country and like you name it, you know. And I think people are just hungry for something real. And in Nashville, you can kind of get this like networky vibe. And I think people are just wanting community and they want a place where they can be themselves and they want a place where they can serve um, and, and, and not get paid for it. But just to go like, I want to, I want to use whatever God has given me and, and just to pour out. And also like for me, I know at the belonging, it's like this thing where I get poured into Right. And it fuels what I do on the road, you know, just right. like having that foundation, having that community. It's yeah. so essential for what I do when I'm traveling. Wow. That's so good. Yeah. So, so it, with when like kind of transitioning into that, that's a perfect segue. I'm curious, like what's your la- latest album? What, what, what's the story behind that? Yeah. So I've got a new um, live worship EP coming out in March. It's about a month, a month away. And, oh, wow. um, First one that I've done, first live worship album that I've ever done by myself. That's you know, so- I've done one with Vertical, I've done one with the Belonging, but yeah. never by myself. So it was a little bit daunting, but exciting. And I knew that it was like kind of the next step. And uh, Jacob, my husband, produced it. And we did it at Rocket Town, which is where we meet for church at the yeah. Belonging. Yeah. So it felt like an extension of church. And um, it's six new songs. We've already released two of them. The other one comes out. I don't know when you're going to release this, Gabe, but the other one um, is coming out this week. So uh, open this over week? us. Yeah, Friday. So, okay. But yeah, um, that's kind of what's on the horizon right now. And um, hoping to do another EP like that in the very near future, just so it makes like a complete album. But we just took it. We're just going to take it six songs at a time right? Uh, just because it is kind of a new endeavor. But uh, I'm so pumped about it. And I've already seen like just a great response from these songs. And all, and, you know, all I really want, it's not, it's not about new songs. It's not about the next Meredith Andrews project. Like all I really want is to write songs that are like authentic to me, the, the things that are in my heart to say to the Lord. When I get around like my friends who are songwriters and we get together in a room and we just go, what? what's on God's heart, you know, or, or what are yeah. the songs that we, we feel like he, he wants us to write for his people, like the yeah. put in the, the mouths of his body, you know, like that's such a weighty thing. Um, but I just want people to experience his presence, you know, whether they go to a church like mine where you walk in the door and you basically get smacked upside the head with the Holy spirit just because <laughs> it's like, he's just moving or or you go to a place that's a little more reserved but you can still sense that he's moving and he's working and or yeah. even in your car or in your kitchen when you're doing dishes like sometimes sometimes god meets me like the most when i'm just doing dishes or hanging out with my kids you know but yeah that's all i'm after is just for people to experience god in, in new ways yeah that's awesome so you've got this new live album coming out where did you record it we recorded at rocket town so rocket oh. town is a venue downtown Nashville, cool. but it's where our church meets yeah. um, uh, currently. We're, we bought a building, um, so we won't be in there very much longer, but that's where we recorded it, so it's pretty cool. And I don't know, people probably 
may or may not know this, but uh, your husband, Jacob, is my one of my favorite producers. Oh. I love him so much. Yeah. He's a great guy. Um, and, okay. and, I, and so <clears throat> he produced your album, right? Your, your, yep. your album. Um, I'm pumped to hear it. I, you have, you have such a beautiful voice and like you're, you're, yeah, you're, you're definitely, uh, an amazing, uh, one of my favorite worship, uh, female worship leaders. I oh, think, thank you. I think there's Darlene check. And then I think there's Meredith Andrews. No, stop, stop, that's, please. Don't even, we're not, not even in the I'm same boat. Thank, thank you. <laughs> Anyways. Um, okay. So that's so cool. That's, that's really awesome. Uh, love that you're plugged into your local church. Love that you're, that you're, uh, you're coming out with some, some new stuff here. Um, and I'm, I think we're going to release this interview on Thursday. So oh, hope cool. people will see it Thursday and then they can uh, make sure they, they, what was it? You, you have a single coming out Friday? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. My last single. So we've really, we're, we're releasing three singles before we release the entire thing, March 8th. So, okay. okay yeah. cool. So I, I have like, you know, I, a personal thing that I like to do with artists that I talk to is like awesome. pick, kind of pick their brains, see how nerdy they are. And like, <laughs> bro, <laughs> cause I, I'm a nerd. I love, like, I, I, I'm the, I'm the kind of a guy I like when I was a kid, when CDs and tapes were really cool. I mean, more CDs cause I grew up in the nineties. Right. But when see, you know, I had like, I had like CD books bro. of my favorite artists and yeah. my albums right so like what would you say just as a piece of trivia here what would you say um you know do you have any favorite albums do you have any favorite uh i mean worship or not yeah uh, artists or or songs what what would well, you okay well let me just like give you a little bit of a heads up i'm so with you on that because just all right here's a just a little backstory um twice a year when i was growing up my mom and I would go, just us, we would go to Raleigh, which is the closest big city. So it was like an hour away from where I grew up. Which, by because, the way, which, which uh, by the way, isn't, isn't spelled Raleigh. It's, it's spelled Rayleigh, right? Or, <laughs> I mean, if you're from Canada. They pronounce it Raleigh. Okay, I'm just making that, it's just a linguistic. It's always been Raleigh to me. And when people say Rayleigh, I'm like, where is that? Where is Rayleigh? <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> but so we would go to <laughs> yeah yeah. <laughs> so we would go to Raleigh because it had, they had like this massive Christian bookstore. It was called Sign of the Fish, <laughs> and okay. it was my favorite thing to do. And we would do it twice a year. And I didn't even care. Like growing up, I I was kind of a tomboy, so like I I didn't care so much about clothes or makeup or anything like that. I just wanted music and I just wanted books. Amazing. So. We would go, my mom would take me and she would let me get 10 new CDs. Like that was a big deal. And we would spend, we would go to Red Lobster for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> this was a <laughs> Because it was right across the street. This was a tradition. Yeah, this was a tradition. <laughs> and then we, I would spend the whole day listening to new records and carefully selecting which 10 I wanted. Wow. And every now and again, I'd let, she would let me get 11 or 12, but like hey. it was a big deal. Um, so I, I am a total nerd. I'm, I'm a nerd right along with you, Gabe, in the music sense. I still, I still love CDs. Like, I don't, I'm so, I'm not even that old, but I'm like old school in that regard. I love opening it. I love reading all the things. Like, it's just the experience, (laughs) the credits, credits. who played, who produced, who wrote it, you know, all of that. I've always loved that. Um, but yeah, even just like, so back in those days, some of my favorites, especially when I would just spend time in the presence of God, like alone, it was Delirious, the cutting edge, yes. the two disc, like that, that's at the very top for me. Um, old like Vineyard, Winds of Worship, like original Vineyard, Rita Springer, Darling Check, you know, old school hill song. Yes. Um, those were the things I was listening to, like in my times of worship, oh, but yeah. I also loved CCM. Yeah. Um, I didn't. I didn't listen to a ton of like mainstream music, but I I did love me some Whitney Houston. Uh, so I mean, <laughs> who doesn't because the Bodyguard soundtrack came out when I was like, eight and or nine, and my dad put that on, and I was like, "What is this? <laughs> you know, this is changing my life right now." So those are just a few. 
The Bodyguard's a great movie. Oh, I mean, yeah. It's a great so, movie. Great awesome. music. Yeah. Classic. So funny. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Totally. So, okay. So, um, so yeah, I'm with you there. And, and those, those were great uh, selections. You know, it's funny because Delirious, I think this is the second or third. No, this is the third time I think that that, that, that album, like the Delirious Cutting Edge, uh -huh. I think it, it made such an impact on people in the mid nineties. I think it yeah. just, it represented almost a, a shift in, in, yeah. in worship music. Yeah. And I'm right there with you. It, it was a, uh, it was a dynamic thing. So anyways, very cool. Hey, so, yeah. Hey, do you remember the record, the <sighs> hungry record when Catherine Scott would sing hungry, hungry, I come to you. I don't know if you ever yes. heard that, but I love that record too. Like that, I would, I set my CD player on that song as my alarm and <laughs> anyway I and I would lay in bed and I would sing it until there was like this guitar like K -k -k, and then I'd get out of bed anyway so it go, K -k -k, I'm falling yeah. on my knees anyway yes sorry yeah. every song on that album yes. is, is gold yeah. yeah um I love that album as well it's so good um yeah. do you remember where you were when um, you first heard um, DC Talks, Jesus Freak? <laughs> I remember where I was the first time I saw the video. Oh, really? I was at my, I was at my house. Yeah, okay. because it used to come on our, our like inspirational channel at 5 o'clock every day, and I would watch all the music videos. And that was the first one that I saw. First time I saw it, and I was like, this is pushing the envelope, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah it was such an out of the box experience okay. yes okay so, so we're we're on yeah we're, we're nerding out so <laughs> so in tandem with what you were saying earlier <clears throat> just about like you know your involvement in uh your local church but also in tandem with with who you are as a worship artist and and you know your experience uh leading worship for years and years you know how would you honestly describe um, kind of an ideal worship environment hmm. or, or atmosphere. What would what would that look like to you? Heaven. <laughs> <laughs> that's such an easy answer. No. I know. <laughs> no, oh man. Well, that's such an interesting question because because I don't know that this side of heaven there's ever an ideal situation and here's why because i i believe that worship this side of heaven is always going to cost us something okay. Be it it because either it's going to cost us our comfort yeah. or our dignity or our time or our effort or energy so i guess i guess gabe like i mean i I love it when I get to come into a place and people are hungry and they're ready and they're expectant. I mean, that's to me, I guess, as ideal as it gets. It's not, it's not the, it's not the surface things. It's not the uh, lights or the sound even, or the, uh, or the songs. It's, it's that people are ready to encounter the presence of God. And so they come expecting to encounter the presence of God. Right. And that's what sets kind of the temperature and, um, the tone, you know, yeah. where it makes my job easy, if you will, where I just have to go, guys, God is already here and he's ready to meet with us, you know. Um, but I do believe, and I, this is something I was even teaching on this past week, that it, like worship always costs us something, you know, it talks about in Romans 12, um, just like our bodies being as living sacrifices. And then I think again in I don't know if it's Hebrews or Corinthians, but it says something about like the fruit of our lips giving praise to his name as a sacrifice. It's like yes. worship is costly. It's yes. meant to be that way. Anything that's worth having, anything that's worth celebrating, anything that's worth um, giving attention and affection to, it, it's going to require something from us. So I think it's less about a perfect scenario and more about just understanding like this is my right response before God. Yes. And I want to give everything that I have because yeah. he's worth it. Yes. Yes. So, so speaking, speaking that into a, a worship environment, 
how, like, would you say that, would you say that that, are, are, you, are you saying that like, to have a, a, a worship environment that would be similar to what you'd want, you know, you'd have to make sacrifices in order to do it. Sure. In, in terms of like, but what would that look like? Would that look like, uh, like a, the sacrifice of, you know, lifting up your hands until you can't lift them anymore? Sure. <laughs> I think so. I think it's an, I think it's for me, it's an expression of uh, getting out of, uh, getting out of this mode of like, what are people going to think of me and going, God, you're worthy of my extravagant worship. So I might look like a crazy person. I'm a white girl. I can't dance, but I'm going to, I'm going to dance before the Lord because he's worthy of it. And I'm not doing it for anyone else. But I realized too, that when I offer up the sacrifice and I just go, I'm, I'm laying it all down. Like I'm, I'm just, leaving it all on the field, you know, like yeah. when I do that, people are, I think, compelled to be even more engaging. Um, but yeah, I think it practically, and, um, just from a picture standpoint, it just looks like expressive worship, you know, hands in the air, people are like faces on the ground. It's just this, I am not here for any other reason than to let God know how much he means to me yeah. and to let God know, like I am, I'm just all the things grateful and yeah. humbled and in awe and yeah, just, I think that that's such a point of maturity. I think that, you know, that perspective, it comes, I think with time because many times, you know, as um, I think when people first come to know Jesus, it's what he can do for them. Right. It's, it's like, Oh, he saved me and he healed me. And, and he's still ministering to me. Sure. And, so, and so sometimes when we come to, to an, a worship experience, it's what can the worship experience do, do for, for me? Sure. And, and, and that, there's nothing wrong with that. But, right. but I think as we mature and as we grow in strength at, as worshipers, it almost turns into a what can I do to bless mm. the Lord? It mm. turns into that alabaster box mm. where you're, you're breaking something in you, you're breaking something, uh, making that sacrifice in order to adore the Lord. Yeah. And I, that's such a mature thing. And, and, well, and, I mean, when you think about, when you read about like even the Levites that were consecrated to be the worship leaders in the Old Testament, yeah. like when you, you can read about it over and over again, the language that the Bible uses in saying that the Levites, you know, were set apart as ministers before the Lord. It yeah. wasn't that they were ministers to the people. They were ministering to the Lord. Right. And I think like our mindset as worshipers, not just as worship leaders, but as just worshipers yeah. has to be my ministry is first to the Lord. How yeah. can I bless his heart? How yes. can I give him the glory that's due his name? And what happens in that is there is a great exchange. It's the supernatural exchange where God can't help but lavish himself and pour out himself on us yeah. when we come with that kind of worship. Like yeah. he, he, he dwells in it. He meets us right where we are. He loves to give good gifts to his children. So yeah. he's never withholding from those who walk up rightly. You know, they, we don't lack anything. But I think it's just this picture of I'm going to pour out my life. I'm going to pour out my heart and my worship before the Lord. Not because I want to get anything, but that's just inevitably what's going to happen. Because God loves to pour out himself on his people. It's such a it's such a deep thing what you just said. And it's such a great principle to live by that sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to God, um, <clears throat> teaching people. I think, gosh, I, I think that that might be a part of, of, of teaching people how to mature in their worship. When you come to when you when you come it's not about the band whipping you up it's not about anything worth you know we could do that if we wanted to but sure. but let's let's be a church that just comes in already whipped up on yeah your, come on <laughs> the holy spirit's already stirring your yep. your own life and and uh you know teaching people how to stir the gift up within themselves i right. love paul tells timothy you you stir up the gift in you don't yeah. For, don't wait for somebody else to come along and do it. That's you it. stir up. It's on you to stir come up. On. So 
anyways, that's so Preach. good. Okay, okay, okay. So, <laughs> okay, so, um, so let's, let's kind of in conclusion here, I, I always like, I always want an, uh, to, to provide an opportunity for like someone to speak into people um, uh, that, that emulate them, that really look up to them. And there's probably, you know, a thousand, um, probably not a thousand people watching this, but <laughs> certainly a, a thousand people who, who would watch this knowing you as fans who are young worship leaders, uh, be they, you know, girls or boys, whatever, but, but they, they look to you as a great <clears throat> leader. And, and th honestly, they, they just want to know, they want to know, you know, advice and wisdom that would help to guide them maybe into, um, into the same field as you or to what kind of what you're doing. And they're at their local churches. Right. So what would you say to that kind of a person? What would you, what maybe top three things that you would say to a young female worship leader uh, that you could speak into her or, yeah. or maybe even a guy? So. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to try to narrow it down to three, but <laughs> all right. So yeah. I already mentioned the first one, um, just being faithful where God's placed you, because yeah. I think so many times as creatives, we get super excited and uh, we have this vision for and dream, you know, dreams for the future, which is awesome. And God will outdream us any day. But it's so important for us to pay attention to the process and the journey because God is actually preparing you in the waiting. God is preparing you in the hard seasons for what he's actually going to fulfill in you that you're not yet ready for. And I, I would encourage you to look at the life of Joseph in the Old Testament and how God gave him a dream when he was 17, but it was 13 years but, uh, until that dream was actually fulfilled. And what did God do in those 13 years? It was yeah. training in the low places. It was teaching Joseph how to rely on God and yeah. not his gifting and not like the dream itself, but on the giver of dreams. And yeah. I always break it down into three kind of sub points under being faithful, the three ways to remain faithful in little things. Um, number one is intimacy, intimacy with the Lord. You've got to cultivate that with God, be a worshiper before you're a worship leader. Um, yeah. you can't take people where you haven't been yourself. So you, it's gotta be, you've got to be a private worshiper before you, you know, step on a platform. Um, secondly is, um, identity, know who you are. It's not your role. It's not your title. It's not um, what you aspire to be. It's not a little thing that's under your email. It's you are a son or a daughter of the most high God. That is your identity. And that is founded. And you discover that when you cultivate the intimacy with God. And then from uh, intimacy and from identity um, comes integrity. Integrity is being single-minded in your focus and your affections. You say what you do. Um, your character represents that of Jesus. And, um, just side note, there's a book that I read recently, changed my life, called Anonymous um, by Alicia Britt Cole, I think is how you say her name. I don't know her, but um, it talks about the obscurity of Jesus's life, how he lived 90 percent of his life in hiddenness and yeah. three years on the scene in public ministry. But what right. happened in those 30 years were so necessary, yeah. the way that he just spent time with the father and got his assignment and grew in wisdom and stature. And oh. so that was, that was point one. Um, number two, I'd say, <laughs> um, uh, I, I thought about this game as we were talking earlier. Um, I love the story in Acts. I, I think it's Acts 16 where Paul and Silas were in prison and they started singing, uh, they started singing praises like as they're in chains and the Bible says that, Oh, I love this so much. Um, that as they were worshiping God, as they were lifting up their praise to the Lord and their songs, uh, every prisoner was released. The chains fell off every prisoner, not just Paul and Silas. Wow. So what that means to me when I read that, it gets me so fired up when you worship, it sets other people free. And the, when you bring that costly gift, when you bring that offering to the Lord, it's yeah. not just because you're getting free. It's because God is wanting to set people free around you. Wow. Um, and I yeah. think that that's really important to remember. Um, and I guess the third thing I'd say is um, if as worship leaders, um, so many times I've heard people say, well, I just want to be invisible. You know, I don't want I don't, I want to kind of take a back seat, and I understand the sentiment of that. Absolutely. And I used to say it all the time too. Yeah. Um, I want Jesus to be seen more than anything. Absolutely. But I think the, 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 uh, right way to kind of go about it and even the right question to ask is since God has given me a platform, since God has put me in front of people and he's 
asked me to serve them. He's asked me to love them. He's asked me to lead them. Um, what am I doing with my visibility? Am I, am I drawing attention to myself? Am I, you know, wanting people to think that I'm a great worship leader or am I pointing people to Jesus? Yeah. And uh, I think it's just important for us to remember, like, God has given us a visible role, but what are we choosing to do with that visibility? Are we stewarding stewarding it well? That's kind of a hard word to say. But um, <laughs> are we facilitating um, just an a, a environment where people kind of see through us and yeah. they just go, yeah, I see Jesus in you. And when I see you worship, it makes me want to elevate my worship as well. So those yeah. are the three things that popped in my head. So like that, those are all amazing. Yeah. So, but the last one there, just taking a posture almost of humility. Yeah. And mm -hmm. where you're, where you're, you're putting, you're putting, it's almost what John the Baptist said, he must increase. I must decrease. Exactly. I think that, it's, I mean, that it's such a gosh it's such a, a, a um that is a big can of worms <laughs> <laughs> because, oh yeah no i just think that like it's it's i think that is such a deep um that could go so deep we don't have time to get into it but sure. it is it really is something that i think people ought to meditate on um uh certainly with with um you know, with the world as it is, uh, moving towards image, image-based, uh, uh, sure. uh, uh, you know, showmanship and and performance, totally. and, and and what people see, and celebrity, and celebrity, and, and celebrity worship. You know, it's like God. You know, I want people to worship Jesus, and yeah. I want to get, I want to completely get out of the way, and um, and I think that I think perhaps the church might need to reflect a little bit more on that um, uh, in the future and yeah. learn, maybe maybe make some transitions and some changes into how we go about um, uh, promoting, you know, ourselves and stuff. Anyways, but I, th I do still think it's a, it's a personal thing as an artist that we, you know, because as artists, we get into our own headspace, right? Totally. It's like, so anyways, no, what a, what a great, great thing to say to, um, I think you, you like, I, I don't want to say anything bad about the other people I've interviewed, but I think you just blew, I think you blew them all out of the water. So, <laughs> well, I don't know who else you've interviewed, but. <laughs> God has given the victory to a woman, you know, it's like, <laughs> it's like Deborah. It's, Deborah. You're the Deborah of worship. I love Deborah. Okay. Right. <laughs> no, I'll tell you, if you're a pastor and you're watching this, you need to have Meredith Andrews into your local church and teach some work on worship because this is, this is this is dynamite. Okay. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you. And sure. you're awesome. And I, I wish you the best uh, for your live album. We're going to be uh, releasing this this Thursday. So please uh, make sure that you download. Uh, is it on your website, Meredith? Where, where, where can they find uh, I mean, yeah, it'll be on everywhere. I like uh, Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes. Um, you can, yeah, find out more info on my website, too, or my Instagram. I feel What's like the, that's my website these days, huh? But yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> What's the name of the song? Uh, the, the, new, the song that comes out on Friday is Open Over Us. Open Over Us. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Okay, well, I'll let you go. Um, uh, okay. I'm sad this is over. It happened so fast. <laughs> It did. It's like, what's going on? Maybe we'll have to reconvene. We'll have a yeah, part, like part two. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Gabe. <laughs> likewise. Yeah. Likewise. Thank you so much. Uh, great talking to you as usual.